Hey everybody, it's Dr. Levi. Welcome to our show, The Dr. Levi Show. This show is about you. We want to give you plans and thoughts to make your life phenomenal. The goal here is how do you optimize your life? Well, you optimize your life with the decisions that you make, with the things that you do. Are you living in that place of passion and ever-expanding gratitude? Are you being kind to other people? I hope you are. Remember, you take goodness wherever you go because you take yourself wherever you go. So really happy to have you with us today. We have a really power-packed show for you today with a lot of guests and a lot of information about bullying, something that I've been very passionate about talking about also because it's really one of those what I call stigmas of society, whereby many people think that bullying really doesn't occur anymore, but it's outdated. Well, it's really not true. Bullying is alive and thriving throughout the world. So I think it's so important that we talk about it on this show, but more importantly, have individuals share their stories with you so it can empower you and your life. Our show is really about healing. How can we make you feel better about yourself? How can we give you the tools that you can need, to again, to optimize your life? That's what it's about. And I think when we talk about bullying, we have to come from a place of compassion for both. One, for the person that is bullied, but also for the bully, because often the bully needs a bigger hug than the person that's being bullied. Why? Because many people that are bullied are, they're not simply the victims, you know, I've always disliked that word, not simply the victims of the person that's being, of the bully, but the bully is doing this from a place of power. They want to make the other person feel less than. And that can be a a physical power issue. It can be one of perceived power. And now with the advent of social media, of course, there can be a great deal of bullying electronically, what I call, you know, social media or cyber bullies or cyber gangsters. You know, so bullying is not simply about someone making a threat or doing a violent act against someone, they can also do it in cyberspace, which can be just as critical, just as damaging, just as severe. So we're going to talk to our guests about that today. And I just want to thank all of you for joining us for our our first Twitch TV uh, broadcast this past week, and it was really, really successful. I think right now we've had about uh, 2,300 views or so. And it's continuing to grow, so we're happy about that. And again, thanks so much for joining us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're on all of those. So I think our platform, again, as well as YouTube, is about giving you information to improve the quality of your life, but also to remind you that you matter and that you're important just the way you are. It doesn't matter your socioeconomic status. You know, the dog walker is no better than the doctor. The physician is no better than the nurse or the therapist or the teacher. Everybody has a proper role in society, and everybody is important. And so I think when we come from a place of respecting other people or invoking that universal rule of treating people the way you want to be treated, I think if we do those things, we have the opportunity to minimize bullying. We have the opportunity to minimize mistreatment of other people. We have the opportunity to treat everyone the way we want to be treated. It's really not that difficult an equation to to solve. It's really about us embracing our own humanity. So let's talk about bullying. Well, what is bullying? Bullying is aggressive behavior or perceived behavior whereby someone feels threatened or there is violence enacted against them. Now, often we use that term for school-age children, but guess what? Bullying can also happen in the workforce. You know, at 35-plus myself, I see it in my workforce, and I remind people that it is not tolerated, it is not correct, and we have to do something about it. And remember, with respect to bullying, children will actually play three specific roles in bullying. Children may be bullied, Children may be the bully or children may watch the bullying occur and not do anything about it. So if you think about it, when that is happening, we have to be aware of the fact that, you know, which role does someone have at this time? Are they are they the bully? Are they being bullied or they're simply watching and being a bystander? Now, you also have to bring into the equation the fact that 
are they being the bully or bullying someone via cyberspace, you know, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. You know, right now, there are so many social media platforms where someone can reach out and do a lot of harm to someone's reputation, to them physically, and even psychologically. Because don't forget, when someone's being bullied, it's not simply about the perceived threat of the physical pain that may occur, but it's also the psychologic. You know, if someone's being bullied, they may not want to go to school. They may not want to go to church or synagogue. They may not want to go out of their home. They may be afraid. So I think it's so important for us to empower young people as well as adults to, number one, to not be a bully. Two, if you see bullying happening, to get involved. Don't, don't simply be a bystander because if you're a bystander, guess what? You're actually a part of the problem. So we have to think about that. It's, it's being proactive. It's about being in our communities and being an advocate as well as an activist. We really have to do that. And guess what? It's really not that difficult. We have to take a stand. You know, as my father would say, you take a stand for something or you take a stand for nothing. Either way, you're taking a stand. So I'm asking everyone to really take a stand against bullying. Now, I want to introduce our guests today. They're, they're really phenomenal individuals that are making an impact into what bullying is, why it should be stopped, and why they are true activists about making a difference in their communities as well as globally. So I want to thank Brooklyn for being here. Hi, Brooklyn. Hi. Happy to have you here, young lady. How are you? Good. Great, great, great. And I want to thank our soon-to-be Academy Award-winning actor, Miss Venetius Machado, for being with us. Venetius, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. You know, Venetius is a, is a, is a great gentleman. Yeah, I actually met him at the Action Icon Awards last year, and he was our first guest on this show, the Dr. Levi Show. So it's really wonderful to have him back after, what, like eight, nine months now to have him back on the show to talk about bullying because he's involved in a foundation, Stop Bullying Now Foundation, and you can reach them on their, their website, stopbullyingnowfoundation.org. And, of course, Venetius is one of their spokespersons, and he's just an amazing guy who is not only an extraordinarily talented actor, but he's also someone who lives this life of activism, and he lives in this place of ever-expanding gratitude. If you really want a phenomenal speaker to come shake up things in your school, to shake up things at your university, to shake up things at your job site, trust me, he's the, he's the guy, he's the speaker you want to have come there and who can really, really have an impactful difference and make a difference in the lives of the people there. So I want to thank Venetius for being here. And we also have an extraordinary woman who I always, I, when, when I'm around her, I always feel like I should do something to be better. She, she, she exudes this energy of perfection. She exudes this energy of true care, compassion, love. She's someone that when you're around her, being around her is like being around her mother, who's also a true perfectionist, someone who's about making a difference in the lives of people and doing what people do. And that is, for friends, people do one thing. They show up. And I want to thank Jamie Price for being with us. Jamie, thank you. Hi. Thank you. Oh, we're so happy to have you here with us today. And just her smile can wake up any room, you know. I, I really mean that. So I, I like Brooklyn and Venetius as well as Jamie to share their stories with us. And I'd like to start off today with Venetius. Tell us about your organization and tell us about some of the experiences that you've had with respect to bullying or your children, because you're also a husband and father. That's correct. First and foremost, thank you again for having me on oh. the show. I just want to give a big shout out to my wife, my beautiful wife, Luis Machado, who's watching. My baby girl, Isabella, who's only four years old, about to turn four. Fantastic. And Israel, who is also home, who's also watching. And some people in Chicago who also uh, said they were going to support me and watch the show uh, today as well. So thank you guys for tuning in. Shout out to you guys. I love you guys. Absolutely. Um, I love Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, um, I've been uh, very privileged to be... Um, uh, the National Spokesperson for Stop Bullying Now Foundation, uh, the Org of America, and I've been going around and uh, just speaking to people, you know, and uh, all over the country, yes. and uh, just really listening, you know, more than anything. And it's it's amazing because a lot of times um, I go in and I have all these, you know, big things prepared that I want to be able to communicate and uh, come across and and be able to impact and influence, but. It, it's the irony of it is that they end up influencing me yes. in a lot of ways, you know, but just being there and just uh, um, 
just being them. And, you know, so I have always had that heart, heart for people. Um, so I'm just very privileged and lucky to be able to do what I do and to be able to do it in a platform that Stop Bullying Now Foundation has allowed me to do. Yes. So StopBullyingNowFoundation.org, guys, exists primarily for one reason. That number one reason is so that we can implement anti-bullying programs in schools nationwide. Why? Because we're, in schools that have anti-bullying programs, it is a fact. Bullying is reduced by 50%. Okay, so it's a very, very serious issue. Yes. And we want to be able to target um, the kids at such an early age. Why? Because they are our future. They are the next generation. And if we can teach them, as um, Dr. Levi re reiterated a little bit earlier, to love others and to treat others the way we want to be treated, the world will indeed be a better place. And it really does start at a young age. Yes. Because as you teach up a child, in a way of life, they stay that way. Um, and so we want to be able to do that. And we also want to be able to um, uh, create um, awareness because awareness brings preventative. Yes. And so instruction is the way of life. So education is, is, is really the, the most powerful tool and, and the most valuable possession that we possess as human beings. So the more that we can uh, instruct and teach kids um, to be able to perceive people, life, um, a certain way, we will indeed be able to change the world. So that's why uh, Stop Bullying Now Foundation was created, and that's why it exists. It is a nonprofit, 24-7. Uh, what we're doing is now looking to expand to um, all of the states in the uh, United States of America, and hopefully in the world, uh, soon to be in the future uh, as well, to be able, again, to implement anti-bullying programs, but also to be a resourceful um, cornerstone for people everywhere in their local communities. So if there's anybody out there going through bullying or you are the bully yourselves, um, you can go to StopBullyNowFoundation.org to find out how you can get information, support, and help immediately in your local community. And that really is the key of the organization, Dr. Levi, yes, yes. you know, to be able to continue to spread the love. Because the definition of bullying is when a person or a group of people try to demean somebody who they think is weaker Absolutely. or who is weaker. But I define bullying as nothing but a lack of love. Yes, it is. You know, it like Dr. That. Martin Luther King, who said, I believe people everywhere should have three meals a day for their bodies, right. education and culture for their minds, dignity and freedom for the spirit. spirit. And that is really just the embodiment of what we can accomplish as human beings. Right. You know, we just have to be taught to be able to pursue life that way. And that's why the organization was created. And uh, I'm just so privileged to be able to uh, well, speak well, for them. Well, you're, you're a great spokesman for them. And more importantly, I know yourself as a father of kids you you've had this experience with your children yes I of have. bullying so I, I want to hear about that experience with like your your son it, it, it was actually a, a very recent um, yes. where my 14 year old he just uh, he's a freshman in high school now and uh, he's in a baseball program and um, I'm not gonna get into uh, the school or things like that just you know for um, privacy state privacy yes. yeah of course uh, but he was being insinuated to fight. He was being called names because he's a newbie in the school, so forth and so on, to the point where he uh, began to feel uh, unsafe right. and um, a little bit discouraged as well. And he's a very, very good, talented baseball player. And uh, that began to weigh in on him, you know, and uh, he was feeling like he wanted to pull off and I'd be a part of that program to a certain extent. And so um, I stepped in and I immediately wrote, uh, as a matter of fact, my wife and I went to go see uh, the school board the very next day when he told us about the incident. Yes. Um, and we spoke to the school. We spoke to the athletic department. We spoke to the athletic director. We were even going to um, go ahead and speak to the board of, of the district, the district yes. board uh, for the school. And pretty much we approached it from a very humanistic point of view, which is um, there's not a perpetrator or a victim here. There's a situation that is happening that is causing friction and hindering the progress of both parties. Right. Um, and what we wanted to do is to be able to bring that, and this is why speaking out against bullying at a, a, at a very um, uh, early age and stage is so important. Right. Because as a matter of fact, only one out of four adults are ever notified that their kids are being bullied yes. or that their kids are the bullies themselves. Right. So we didn't go in and judge or anything. We simply went in to communicate and to talk to the, uh, to, to, um, um, 
uh, the authorities right. about the situation that was being presented to us yes. so that we can go ahead and proceed with an investigation and get to the bottom of it. Long story short, everybody was so helpful. They jumped in right away. Conversation had started. And I simply said to uh, the authorities at hand, I said, I just don't want either one to become another st st statistic yeah, exactly. within the bully epidemic. Exactly. So this isn't about my son and this isn't about the kid. Right. This is about an issue that needs to be resolved. Right. And it was, and it was very harmonious yes. and, and, and very beautiful. And right. everybody, again, was so gracious and so um, um, involved. Yes. And why, do, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because it's so important for parents out there to get involved in their kids' lives. And the reason I was able to be notified is because I have an open door communication policy with my kids. Absolutely. And my, my son feels so confident and so uh, secure in telling me everything about his life. Right. You know, from the growing pains to the things that are happening uh, in his thought process, right. in his thought life. Um, and so that is really key to beginning to have a healthy relationship with your kids. And this is one of the reasons why I wrote Bullying Reasons and Answers. Yes. You know, I have the manuscript here and I'm trying to seek for a distribution now. Right. And, uh, you, you know, it's just a, a powerful tool to be able to, again, bridge that gap. Absolutely. That is missing in our society today. Right. You know, and communication is key. So um, I'm very fortunate to be um, um, at the position that I am where I have all the information and the resources. And not that I know everything, but I've been able to implement that into my own kids' uh, walk and be able to help them in the journey. So if I can do that for somebody else as well, I'm just luckily and privileged to be able to do so. Well, oh, absolutely, because I, I think what you said, again, has such power and wisdom is that one of the true bridges in stopping bullying is communication. <coughs> That's right. And also to let children know, as my father would say, there are no good secrets. So if they are going through something, share it with the parent. And a parent has to accept it without judging the children or without judging the one that's, that's doing the bullying. That's right. So I, I think the, the power of this organization is opening those doors of communication and letting people know that you have to talk about this. It can't be hush-hush. It can't be don't, let's not talk about it. And the children have to be aware that it's okay to tell your mother and father everything. Every, there is nothing off limits. Yeah, nothing. That's right. You have to build that at an early age to it, let them know. And it starts with the parents. Yes, it, it does. It really does. I mean, we have a policy in our home where there's no media at the table at all. And that's table correct. is time to communicate and right. talk. And so we have this uh, policy or, or however you want to put it. Policy. Table talk. Right. We get to the table and we talk. Right. And that's what we do. There's no media allowed whatsoever. Right. Perfect. And everybody knows time to table, whether we're eating or not. It's time to talk. Absolutely. And, and that really, you know, is a simple, and I know parents are very frustrated nowadays with juggling two or three jobs and the way that life is going and all, but it really just, it's as simple as, hey, I just want to have a conversation with you. Absolutely. How was school today? Right. And just asking simple right. questions is, how are you doing? Right. Is there uh, a, a sign of bullying anywhere? Right. Um, have you been bullied? Are you bullying? Right. You know, is there anything? How are you feeling? Do you have a girlfriend? Right. You know, do you, have, do you have a crush on somebody? Yeah, you want to ask. It, 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 communication, yes. you know, and I think we've forgotten that in a social media age that we are in today. In, in social media, if you think about it, it lends itself to communicating less. That's right. It lends itself to... Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, it lends itself to that. So I think it's so imperative that we really appreciate the value of conversation, of speaking, of talking, and also for parents to know that if you don't ask, you will never know. That's right. If you ask, you might know. Not, not, not will know, you might know. But if you don't ask, you will definitely not know. And you might save a life. And you might save a life. Your child or someone else's child. That's right. So it's so important that we have those real open lines of communication. Because I, I, I believe that with communication, we build blocks of love, acceptance, inclusivity and non-judgment. That's right. I really believe that. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, Venetia, for sharing that. With I want to welcome Brooklyn here to the show. Brooklyn, you are some beautiful young lady you are. How are you? Good. I want to hear about, about your life, and I want to know about you having any experiences with bullying yourself. Well, I started getting bullied when I was in kindergarten. And how old are you now, Brooklyn? I'm 10. You're 10 years old. So well, I'm turning 10. Fantastic. <laughs> We're about the same age. That's fine. <laughs> so so when, did, when did you start having the first experience with bullying? You were nine? No, I was um, five. You were five. Well, t tell us what happened to you. 
I was playing, and whenever I would ask someone if I could play with them, they would usually say no because I'm, like, fat. And it would really hurt my feelings. That hurts my feelings for you. Now, when, when that happened, did you tell your teachers and your parents? I told my mom. Yes, and what, how did she respond to you? She thought I, um, I don't really know how to explain it, but she thought it was not really true because the person would always act nice to her. Yes. And not really to, to you. Me. Okay, okay. Well, you know, it, it's so important that you know that you're beautiful just the way that you are, That's okay? Right. And that uh, the world is waiting for all the wonderful gifts that you have to express and that you don't need anyone else to validate you. All right. You're beautiful and perfect just the way you are. And the wonderful thing is that the universe, God, has only made one of you for all of us to enjoy. There's only you. So we're so blessed and happy and privileged that that you, Brooklyn, are perfect the way you are. OK. And it's so important, too, when you see bullying. What do you do when you see bullying occurring? I try to um, help to see if anyone's doing it or I tell um, I a new need. Yes. Whenever it occurs. You're doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing. Are you doing well in school right now? Yes. Good. Do you like going to school? That's important. You know, as Brooklyn said that she loves going to school, and as Venetia's implied earlier, and that is when a child is being bullied, often they may not want to go to school, or they may want to change schools, or they may start doing very poorly in school when they were doing really stellar earlier. You see their grades take a, a major shift. So I, I think for parents out there today who are listening, it's important that you are aware and that you are vigilant and that you are speaking to your children. Because if you're not talking to them, guess what? Everybody at school, they're talking to them, and they may not be saying the right thing, or they may not be treating them properly, or the child may be bullied, or the child may be a bully. Again, as I said before, you know, psychologically, we know that there are three major roles. Again, I want to reemphasize this. There's the bully. We know that person really well. There's the person that's being bullied. We've all had that experience. And then third, there's the one who's the bystander that sees the bullying occurring, but they do nothing. And that bystander, believe it or not, sometimes can be someone's best friend, their best boyfriend, their best girlfriend. It can even be a family member. But I want to reiterate this also. When it comes to bullying, it's not simply in the school environment. It can also be at work. Now, I want to share an experience with you later about myself, but I, I want to have one of our other really spectacular guests, Jamie Price. I want to hear about her story because I think her story reminds us that many times we think that there can be a, a buildup of bullying, meaning sort of like if someone's in an abusive relationship uh, with, the, with their husband or wife, where it may start off with a threat. Then it may proceed to something um, very negative. They may say something very negative to them. Then it may go to a slap. Then it may go to a punch. Then it may go to a punch and a kick. And finally, it escalates to a, a violent beating. Sometimes it goes like that. However, sometimes it may be something different. It may go from a threat to a beating like that. Sometimes there's, there's, there's no, there's no buildup to seeing how this escalates. So, and that's why, as Mr. Machado Venetia said earlier, and I, I, I completely agree, get involved now so that the escalation doesn't occur. He said it so well. He said, we have to get involved with the early stages of it so that there wouldn't be later stages that would be maybe more distasteful or more disdainful. You know, you want to get involved now. Now, Jamie, I'll, again, I want to thank you for being with us. So I want to hear about your bullying experience at what age this occur and, and what happened exactly. I actually experienced very two different types of bullying. Yes. Um, both of actually what you just said. So the first one happened pretty young. It started within elementary and it escalated all through my middle school years. Yes. Um, it was a torment of a, you know, a daily process of kids coming up to me and they would make fun of the fact that I have excessive facial hair and as you know a girl that's not normal in you know their words and they would constantly you know come up and pull at my face or they'll start you know saying that 
you know, is one of your parents a wolf or a, a bear or, you know, whatever yes. choice of animal they yes. decided to use. And they would say, are you a werewolf? Or, you know, different things like that. And it, w it was relentless and it was, it was going on for years. But then, you know, back to what you said, unfortunately, that's not always the case. Yes. And it went also to a, a second type where I, w I was uh, bullied, where I was actually jumped and physically attacked. Yes. It happened, you know, early in the day. I was getting threats. Now, mind you, I, I never met these people before. And what grade were you in at this time? I was in seventh grade. You were how time. old? I was 12. Yes. Yeah. Um, so at 12 years old, you know, I'm, I'm with a group of friends and we're all having a good time. And these other group of girls, again, the school is very large. Yes. Um, you know, being a public school is extremely large. So I've never known these girls. I couldn't even tell you in the lineup, you know, their names or who they were. Yes. And they would, you know, were threatening and they started to do kind of actually a little bit what your son was going through saying, you know, are you going to, you know, you want to fight me? You want to do this? You want to do that? And you didn't know them? I didn't know them. Yeah, exactly. And so um, I can't emphasize enough what you were mentioning about the third party that people tend to kind of over the bystanders. The bystanders. Yes. Yeah. So I was fortunate enough to where one of my friends actually knew these girls, knew their reputation and knew that it wasn't the greatest of reputations. Yes. Was able to tell the school. The school actually pulled me out of my class and I spent about two period length of pointing out and going through like yearbook photos of who these girls were because that's how I did not know them. Right. And so I had to point them out. You know, we had to do our statement. They did the whole process and I left there feeling like I was going to be okay. Yes. And they, you know, they assured me that, you know, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen to you. You're going to be fine. They're going to take care of, you know, talk to the girls. You'll be fine. Yes. Well, at the end of the day, now again, this is just a span of one day of not knowing these people. Yes. And at the end of the day, I I'm leaving my, my final class, I'm headed over to my mother's car, and nanosecond, I just feel somebody, you know, grab my head, and it began. I yes. mean, it was a, a group of four people and myself, and I was walking with a friend, and people stood around and made a little circle and just watched it happen. It. You were savagely beaten. You were, oh, yeah. you were actually knocked out. Yeah. Well, I don't, this is what's unfortunate, is I don't remember much. I do remember... You know, they had grabbed me. I turned around, and yeah, I think it's an instinct thing where I turned around and I, I swung. Like that's the first you thing knew I something thought. Was happening. Yeah. Yes. And the next thing I know, somebody is on my back, holding me down. Another person has an arm on me, and then I feel a blow to my head. Yes. I don't remember anything else. Yes. And the last, the next thing I remember is I'm being ushered by our janitor, and he has me by my backpack, and another girl, the first girl I saw, yes. by her backpack yes. over to the office. And I don't remember anything else from there. And I don't, I don't find out till later that, you know, for, through statements and through witnesses that I, I was thrown against a, a stucco wall. And I guess that's what made the, caused the blackout. Yes, the concussion. And, yeah. And then, then it went to the point where I must have, I fell to the floor and there was kicking. And I, I mean, I suffered head concussions, yes. you know, back injuries, you know, hands. It was bad. It was it's really it's bad. horrible. You yeah. know, when I hear a story like that, it, it makes my, uh, it does two things. One, it makes me feel extraordinarily badly that someone would do that to another human being. There's another part that makes me feel badly that other young girls would do this to another peer, another girl. Mm -hmm. And then there's a third part that for me is the worst of the worst, is that you have all these bystanders there and no one, no one did anything. Yeah. So I, I, I think it's so important that that your your story above all stories here shines the light on the bystander has power and a bystander has to get involved because if not someone may lose their life may lose a body part may wake up differently may not wake up so when i hear stories like that it it makes me feel very very sad that one you as a as a 12 year old young young girl had to experience that. And also, it, you know what else makes me feel bad? The fact that that experience goes with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. So that experience that you had, that you can share, you share with your mom, your mother, that experience goes with her for the rest of her life. Because she will be always thinking, even though she may never tell you, your mom is going to always think, what could I have done to protect my child more? What could I have done to love her more? What could I have done to maybe make her 
tell me about this sooner. But in your case, there was no sooner. It was one day. So again, it lends power to the fact that sometimes there's an escalation in the threats, and sometimes it's threat and then violent action. And you had that. Yes. It's really, uh, what was the school's final thoughts about this? Because this is really a extraordinary event that was life-changing for you. The one thing I, I, I mean, I can't emphasize this enough, and I'm, I mean, you're very fortunate that the school that your son goes to was able to, you know, take action and, and, and handle it in a very good way. And, I mean, I, the school did, you know, have the girls come in, and I don't know if that maybe escalated the process and angered the girls more. I genuinely don't know, but what I, I, I guess I would like to just bring awareness for for school is just the yes. fact that they sh shouldn't take these threats lightly. Absolutely. You know, I mean, even if they get them every day and, and, and it never really happens, there's always that one chance that it could happen. And Absolutely. I happen to be that one chance. Right. So they didn't take it as seriously as I wish they would have. Um, you know, and unfortunately, I'm sure there's people who also have the same story as Absolutely. I do. Absolutely. And they need to take every single threat, even if they happens every day and nothing comes out of it, every single threat counts. It, every sing, every this one. This is so serious, if you don't mind me to jump yes, in. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the number one instigator for suicide among kids and teens is bullying. Absolutely. 100 160,000 kids stay home every day from school. And that number is increasing by the right. minutes because right. of bullying. Absolutely. And so this is why it's so serious right. and so important because not only does it go on with you for the rest of your life, but most of the times, unfortunately, the, pre, the, the person that is bullied ends up becoming the bullying because they feel like they have to retaliate Absolutely. just to be able to protect themselves right. from it happening again. Absolutely. And in a lot of ways, they're influenced. And, and, and in, most, in, in the one statistic, um, they end up being you know, incarcerated. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that projects a life uh, perception and a lifestyle that really they didn't ask for. Right. So this is why we have to go back to the early stages and try to influence and, and, and instruct them to view and to uh, perceive life a certain way Absolutely. and to deal with this. And this is why communication is so important. Yes, it is. As within any marriage, you, you're going to have conflicts because you're two different people. Right. But one of the rules that we have within uh, our, our house is that we don't attack the person. Right. No matter how wrong or right that person may be, we always talk about the issue. Right. It's always about the problem. Right. And in communication, I, I can't stress that enough, it is the key Absolutely. to solving that. And you start there. Absolutely. It's not you, it's this. Let's right. talk about this. How do we handle? And in any given relationship, again, yes. treat others the way you want to be treated. Absolutely. You're going to have to compromise. And if you have love, you're going to be able to make that. Because what is love? It's sacrifice and Absolutely. it's a choice. Yes, it is. Not to put yourself above the other. Absolutely. But to put yourself in their shoes and find a way where you can find harmony. And, I mean, Dr. Martin Luther King was a, a, a genius at defining this. Um, and I do want to call him uh, uh, with something yes. a, a yes. little bit later, if I may. But I just want to read this one quote because I think it just yes. encompasses, um, you know, the summary of everything that we're talking about. Absolutely. It was James Allen. Oh, my, and my as a man think it, the book that you gave yes, me last I time I was here. Yes. And uh, this is an amazing book, by the way. <laughs> James you. Allen, as a man think it, I highly recommend it. It's become like a source for living for me. And Absolutely. he just, uh, just one quote, he says, the body is the servant of the mind. Yes. It obeys the operations of the mind, whether they be deliberately chosen or automatically expressed. At the bidding of unlawful thoughts, the body sinks rapidly into the disease and decay. At the command of glad and beautiful thoughts, it becomes clothed with youth youthfulness and beauty. And I just think that encompasses everything because it really is as titled as a man thinketh. Yes. So is he. Absolutely. You know? So I think if we can begin to instruct our kids right. and our society to view people not as a, 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 a as a threat or the situation of bullying in and of itself right. as a uh, condescending, but as a constructive um, issue that we have to deal with. Yes. And we begin to look at as at people right. for people. Right. And, and, and not for um, a lot of times what we see, like you were saying earlier, as the victim or the perpetrator. Right. But they may be going through a situation at home that you have no idea or a background that you have no idea right. that has gotten them. As I said, a lot of times the bullied becomes the bully. Absolutely. So, you know, we just have to be able to love people. And if we open our, if we open our hearts to truly love, we will listen. And when we listen, we care. And when we care, 
we can make change and we can influence. This is so true. And, you know, your organization, StopBullyingNowFoundation.org, they're really about doing that. I That's mean, right. as, as you, you being their spokesperson could not be more phenomenal because, one, you've lived it, you've experienced it in your own family, but more importantly, you're about making a change so that this does not continue. Because we do know, and as you say with the statistics, many of these people, especially the young kids, are bullied because of their, their, their skin tone their color, their gender, their sexuality, their gender identity, their lack of money, or just because they're there and they're not a part of a, a certain group of people, men or, men or women, then they're thought to be less than. So I, I think our, our goal today with this show is about bringing forth some healing. As Venetia said so well, and Jamie, as well as Brooklyn says so beautifully, it's really about us looking at other people, I think, the, the, the sum it up, to look at other people as simply a reflection of ourselves. If we see another person, we're looking at ourselves, how we treat ourselves, how we speak to ourselves, how we want to be treated by ourselves. I think most of us want to be treated with love, with dignity, with kindness, without judgment, without anyone pointing a finger at us. Because I think so often we forget when we point a finger at someone else in judgment, there are three fingers pointing at us. So we have to be really aware of that. And I believe when we come from a place of, of love, when we come from a place of authenticity, when we come from a place of truth, then people know who you really are, and they, they, they respect that. And it gives you the chance to respect other people. Um, I really want to thank you also, Brooklyn, for, for being with us today because your story is very, very impactful. You know, because I know you're not a bystander, correct? Mm -hmm. you're, you're getting involved. Is that correct? Yeah. I, I really think that's great. You're very brave. <laughs> exactly. You, you're very brave. You're very amazing. All right? I want you to always remember how amazing you are. Okay? That's and important. speak up. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Always speak up. Always, always know that your voice, your voice matters. Your ideas matter. And that no one has the right to speak to you inappropriately. No one has the right to put their hands on your body. Your body is a sacred temple. If anyone does that, it's, I don't care where they touch you, you need to tell your mom, tell your dad, let them know. Especially if someone says they're going to touch you or say something to you and that it's a secret. There are no secrets, okay? There are no secrets, never. There are never any good secrets. There are never any secrets, just never, never. Truth is always best. As Venetia said, and as Jamie said so well also, communication. Talk to your mom, talk to your dad, and, and let them know about anything, any student at school, any teacher, any coach or trainer. If anyone says or does something that doesn't make you feel good or you feel unsafe, we want to know about it, okay? because we want to protect you. And we really want parents to know that we want your children to be protected. But you can only be the protector if you speak about it, if you talk about it, if you have communication. Venice, you really said that so well. Can I just say, say something? About yeah, about beautiful quick, Brooklyn? Yeah, because you're so beautiful. Um, and, and it's true. And I want to just thank you for your courage to be on a show like this yes. and to be speaking out. Because now your story can impact somebody else out there going through it as well on your on, on, on your uh, age range and you can change their lives forever and you can save a life so not only for speaking up I want to thank you in that instance that you were um, uh, went through but also for speaking out now as, yes. as Dr. Levi said with a beautiful voice yes. of experience yes. because now you are indeed the advocate for anti-bullying yes and you have become a beautiful sunlight a beautiful sunrise yes. for others to look to and to see how they can go through that process and get through it as well so I just want to thank you for your courage for being on the show and for uh, uh, speaking out the way you do and you and there you are and I just want to say one last thing that if, if ever your parents don't ever listen to you or you feel like they're not listening or maybe you speak to them and you tell them what it's going through. Don't be afraid to speak to other people as well that you can rely on. Absolutely. Um, you know, whether that be a, a peer or an authority at school or um, somebody, you know, but find somebody. Somebody out there will listen. Uh, but don't ever stop s speaking about it and what you may be going through, okay? Brooklyn, we appreciate you. Can we give Brooklyn a, a clap? Yeah. I, want, I, want just, I just want to give her a, a shout out. 
Brooklyn, just amazing. Yay. Just amazing. We just, uh, you just brought it today. We really appreciate you being here. And as Venetia said, you know, your courage inspires us. As, as the young adults that we are, we're inspired to say more, to be more, to do more, to be an advocate for you, to be an advocate for others, to make sure that other people know that they matter, just like you matter. Remember that, Brooklyn. You are important. You are, you are an extraordinary young woman and that the world is waiting for you. Remember that, okay? You don't need anyone to tell you anything different. You're perfect the way you are. Your body, your face, your skin, your mind, you're perfect. Continue to do well in school. Speak out against bullying and don't be a bully, which I know you're not. And tell people about your experience with bullying because it will inspire them, all right? We really appreciate you, Brooklyn. We really do. You're an amazing woman. Amazing. Yes. And Jamie, I, I want to thank you for sharing your story. You know, when you look at your life right now, how it unfolds, I mean, you, you recently married, have a great husband, Aaron. I met him. He's a phenomenal young guy and uh, with a, a great sense of, of responsibility and creativity. When you see how your life is unfolding now, when you go back to that place of knowing that this bullying occurred in your life, where do you draw strength? Um, you know, I would love to honestly say, like, oh, I, I'm, I'm stronger, I'm better, I'm not affected, I'm okay, um, which is true to a sense. I, it has definitely made me stronger. I feel like n out of everything that I went through, it, it, it has just, it, it's built my character. It, it's yes. honestly created half of who I am. Yes. And um, at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm reminded daily because I still suffer from those injuries of, yes. you know, what they caused. And it honestly, I think the anger of what I went through kind of fuels to like, you know, no matter what happens and whoever else, I mean, I, I want to speak specifically to those who are watching the bullying happen. Yes. Um, it's okay to tell others that it's not okay. You know, right. what you're doing, the behaviors that you're doing to this other person, it's not okay. And it's okay to either, if you don't feel comfortable for your own safety, then go tell somebody else. You Absolutely. know, tell an authority, tell somebody. It's just because that alone, I feel like would have made a, such a huge difference. And um, I just, I just everything that I go through through today is just a matter of because of that, I am now better. Yes. And what did you do to decompress from the fear, to take the fear out of your life, to know that you're going to be OK, that your mother loves you, that you are protected, that she stands by you as your greatest advocate. She stands by you as, as your greatest protector and loves you unconditionally. Mm -hmm. What what how, how did that unfold? It was honestly just the support out of everything because I was in and out of the hospital for a while. Yes. I was going through, you know, so much of just trying to heal physically, yes. emotionally, and it was honestly the support I had. Like, my mom was there through the entire time, and she yes. was, you know, with me at every single appointment, made sure I, I got through everything and did everything she could to actually make sure that the school learns from their yes. mistake that they made that time and, and made that change. Absolutely. So, honestly, without that support, I, don't, I, don't, I probably would have been a statistic. And right and did something sooner that I shouldn't have. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I, I want to I just say here that, uh, you know, meeting your mom, you know, she's really an extraordinary woman, you know, a great power, great uh, intelligence, great creativity. So I know if you have her stand by you, you have the best, someone who will be your advocate and who will make things happen so it doesn't happen to other people. That, that's the great thing about your mom. So... Um, I, I think you, you truly have a champion and a hero in your life. And I think your story also underscores the fact that there's not simply the physical trauma of it. There's the psychological and emotional trauma that these young women and men go through for life. Oh, yeah. Even if they say, well, it doesn't hurt me as much now, they never say, I've just forgotten about it. It's like, like a death. When people say, someone recently told me, I had, one of my dogs died about two years ago. And... Uh, a good friend of mine, she said, oh, you haven't gotten over that yet? I said, well, no. <laughs> no, I haven't gotten over it. I said, I deal with it, I accept it because I, you can't stop death. Mm -hmm. But as far as the having an animal that you've had for over 10 years and, and when they leave you, it's like, it's like losing the child. Mm -hmm. um, you don't just get over it. You, we deal with it. And I think the emotional trauma of bullying is a very good correlation where you, you, you deal with it, you don't forget it, but then you try to do, as Venetia said so well, grow out of it. Don't become the bully, 
become an advocate against bullying, mm -hmm. become an activist against bullying, become an activist against the bystanders, and to give knowledge and credibility knowing that you have to get involved to stop this epidemic. It's an epidemic. It's really a pandemic. It's more because it's everywhere. It's in every nook and cranny of society, spoken and unspoken, you know. Vinicius? Yeah, I mean, I just want to... You're an incredible story. Yes, you And is. I mean that from the bottom of my heart because, and, and you know, I just want to say that she's been very fortunate to be able to have the kind of mom that she does yes. and the support system. There's so a lot of people who don't, and they don't get through it. And you're right. right. It, some people, they, the effect of it never wears off. Absolutely. And you can't just brush it off. No. You can't just say, okay, well, here's a statistic. This is what you do, blah, blah, blah. Now go on and live your merry life and, you know, be, be, be well again. No, that's not, that's not how it works. Doesn't. We are emotional beings. Yes. You know, we are mental beings. Correct. You know, it affects us. Absolutely. And so I think part of the communication um, um, uh, steps again is that you have to find somebody who you can continue just to communicate with and and and, and find healing yes. and I think that um, sometimes is um, misunderstood where incidents especially within schools and stuff they just like w as within your case okay well you know this is why a lot of times another statistic is is that bullying is just regarded as a normal you know part of growing up and mm -hmm. kids being kids right. and, and it's not not at all you know it, it's 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 not right, right for a human being to mistreat another human being uh, we are valuable you know there, there's sanctity and there's yes. there's value and right. there's there's um uh, our, our lives are precious yes they are and and, and our emotions and you know imagine Im think about think about the physical act that she went through. Yes. Horrendous. Horrific. It, it, think about how powerful sometimes our words are. Sometimes the most harmful thing that we can do to a person is to say something that is so harmful that sticks with them. And this is what I'm trying to say. The difference between an act of violence and the intention a violence with a bad word is only the act itself because it all begins in the heart and Absolutely. this is what I'm trying to get to you gotta go right back to love you know the basic foundations of being a human being treating others the way we want to be treated now I, I do want to say to Jamie that you have to continue to allow yourself to be open to the healing process mm -hmm. And it's not so much that you are now an advocate for anti-bullying, but you have the power in your hands to transform your life right. sincerely and to not allow that incident to have so much power over you. And I know that it's easier said than done, but it all begins with you opening yourself to that healing process. And if ever you get to the place where you don't feel like you are getting past that, don't feel like you are insignificant or that you've not reached it or that um, you never will. It just takes time. Mm -hmm. And what you went through is not only horrendous, but it is unspeakable. And it's, a, it's going to take time for you to be able to wear that off. And the impact that you can have now on those girls or those people is life-changing and, and I can't stress it enough that love really does last and that love never fails and it, if you can get to a point ever where you can find love for them and you can forgive them and if you ever come across them again and you can express that in such a way that they would, I, I just know, I just know, and I see it in you, I see it. You're going to be able to change their lives, and who knows what, how many other lives you're going to be able to impact as well for that. So, you know, it, it, it's an amazing, amazing story that, um, thank you so much again for sharing and for being here.
And I just want to commend you, Dr. Levi, for giving oh, people, you. you know, like Brooke and like right. Jamie, uh, the platform right. to be able to speak about their experiences. Absolutely. This is really, really yeah. an astounding show right. and a platform. And you are truly a humanitarian, <laughs> just won a humanitarian <laughs> award oh, and well-deserved. Oh, so I just commend you and I thank you. Well, well thank you very much, Venetius. Sorry, can I actually add yes. to something? Because it's of funny course. that you say that. Of course. And it's because... I actually did run into one of the girls just a couple months ago. Oh, really? Yes. And it, it's crazy because you're, you you know, you feel like you've gotten past it. You feel like you're healing. You, you know, I honestly felt like, you know, none of these girls didn't affect me as bad as I thought, you know, they did. And then it's just a physical thing. And I still have to kind of go through physical things now, but I'm okay emotionally. Yes. And when I actually saw this girl yes. face to face, I mean, we were, you know, inches away from each other. And it honestly, it's crazy how your mind works because I kind of, I must have tuned them out or blocked it out because took me a while to recognize who this girl was until I saw the name tag. I was at a store and um, I realized and it clicked. This this is the girl that attacked me. Now, did she me. recognize you? The same exact time it clicked. I feel like it clicked for her because you saw the eyebrows go up. You kind of saw the jaw open yes, up a little bit. Yes. And um, immediately, like, again, you think you're over it. And I kind of felt this sense of, I don't want to say anger or, or fear, but it was it's just, it was unsteady. And... I didn't even want to talk to her. I was in the line for the register for her, and I did an about face and went to the other line because that's where I was at the time. So it's yes. funny how you feel that way, but you're right. It takes time, and I'm still still probably going through because that yes. just happened a few months ago. And, it's you know, a process. It, exactly. It is a process. So it's more about being patient and, again, realizing that I still have some healing to do, and I will get there eventually, right. hopefully. You will. You will. <laughs> yeah. You will. Yes. You know, I, I, I really, uh, today's show was, was really about, I think, uh, using this as a platform to talk about everyone's courage mm -hmm. and everyone's insight and everyone's beauty about what it is when it comes to bullying that we need to do to stop it, to save lives, to make a difference, to be an advocate as you are, Vinicius, to be very conscious of where you are in your healing process like you are, Jamie, and to know that forgiveness really, I, I think, is at the forefront of all of this. Forgiveness, love, communication, and again, going to that place of, that I think is so important of really authentic gratitude that, that one, you survived this, Jamie. Two, so did you, Brooklyn, and, and your son did also, Venetius. And now it's, okay, now that we've gone over the survival, great, how do we make a difference? What do we do now to, to process the grief process the, the hurt, the pain, and to deal with the psychology of bullying. Because I think I've always thought that when it comes to bullying, the psychological part is even more damaging than the physical. The physical, the body will heal. It's a dynamic instrument. It will heal. But the brain and the psychology of dealing with the thoughts, the memories, the nightmares, the seeing the person again, going to the place where it occurred, passing the high school again, passing. I'll, I'll share this with you. When I go back to New Orleans, where I'm from, I went to Holy Ghost High, Holy Ghost Elementary School. And there I was uh, bullied uh, tremendously because of the, the, my, my skin tone. You know, I was called, you know, uh, we don't, we don't, you know, often I wouldn't get on the basketball teams. I wouldn't play on sports because so we don't want, we don't want uh, black nigger Levi on. We don't want black nigger Danny on. I mean, really horrific things. And, uh, and it was tough. And even when I go there now to see my mother, I pass that and I can still hear those things. I can still hear the echoes of the past resonating so intensely in my mind now as a, as a man. You know, a child them. I'm a man now. So I know that that hurt is, is very, very deep. It's very deep. But I also know with having deep hurt, there's the opportunity to have great joy in the forgiveness of not necessarily letting it go, but processing in a way that we can deal with it that works for our life, to empower ourselves and not know that the voices and acts of the past impact us so intensely now. But it really is a process. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's not a joke, Jamie. It's definitely not a joke. No. Mm -hmm. I have yes, a question Venetius. for Jamie, actually, yes. if I may. Yes. Um, do you feel that you are reliving or at least reciting the incident on a day-to-day -day basis on your mind at least um, does it come up does it come up often and if so w what are you doing to uh, manage and deal with those thoughts if you don't mind me asking I actually do um, and it's mainly because I am I still like I said suffer from a lot of the physical 
pain. Um, and every time one of those physical pains where, you know, I'm having my back issues, my leg go nu goes numb, I'm reminded, like, this all happened because of that one incident. And so he goes back to that, you know, you relive it, you feel it all over again, the anger, and you kind of have to take a, I mean, I have to take a step back sometimes and just think, it's okay, yes. like, I'm okay. And it's, it's something I, I have to live with and I still have to, you know, heal from. So is it more like on a day-to-day -day basis, just oh, with yeah. the physical pain? Oh, physical pain is on a daily. Yeah. So it, when it gets to a point where it's it's a little unbearable, and like I said, I, I, I've gotten times where I have to pull over because my leg goes numb. I have to, you know, and that's when I'm like, oh, there's the anger, because that's, sure. that's the reason why. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But it shows you that, that bullying can also lead to a form of something I was going to talk about earlier is post-traumatic stress disorder. That's right. That, that that's this right. type of issue is so impactful and so life-changing that people carry this for a long time. Yeah. And some will self-medicate with alcohol. Some will self-medicate with food. Some will self-medicate with other drugs. Some will self-medicate with other destructive mechanisms to forget about what happened, to not be as present to the pain. But I think when we present for the pain, we disempower it. I think we try to avoid it then we empower it. I think we meet it head on and say, I'm better then, I'm stronger then, that will not happen again. I will not be a bystander, I will not be a bully, and I will not be bullied. I think when we greet it, I think it shows our character and fortitude of person. And I think for us, it's so important that we are impactful with our humanity that we're here for a purpose, and that we live a life of change and not simply exist or live, but live with a focused purpose for making a difference within this whole, you know, beautiful, eclectic fabric of humanity. We have to make a difference. Vanessa, you were going to say? No, I just, um, if I may, I just want to add, you know, um, <clears throat> that I, I truly believe that there's four reasons why bullying actually occurs occurs and I think you know and I'll just lack of instruction you know um, right from an early age again as I said just impacting and training and teaching the kids um, that you ought to respect yes somebody who's different than you or yes. who um, comes from a different background so forth and so on and then it's learned if they're not instructed then they learn it you know and they learn sometimes the bad habits, unfortunately, <clears throat> then a lack of discipline, a lack of confronting bullying at the forefront, you know, and just speaking out about it, not being a bystander, but as a matter of fact, when it happens, actually um, speaking up against it and confronting it right, right. from the get-go right. so it doesn't prolong it or evolve into something even deeper. Right. And then, as I said before in my own definition of bullying, a lack of love, Yes. you know, in order to be able to find that place of forgiveness once you get past that healing. Uh, I think it's really remarkable, you know, that Jamie is um, here yes. and and still going through it. Right. And as you said, with, with the traumatic experience, and I, it's so recent, I, I had no idea. I, right. You know, I was bullied when I was 12 years old right. as well. Um, and in various ways in my own industry, I right. deal with it, with the stereotypes and right. me being a person of color and right. so forth and so on. But, I mean, a month ago when you're here, I mean, that that... That is a plausible, no, uh, and I, yeah, I, I can't stress it enough how important it is to have a mom like J Jamie's, yes. you know, uh, uh, Janet, just for being there for them, you know, as was in the case with my son, I, 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 I had to step in. Yes. And um, n not, not so much to, to be able to go and, you know, uh, I, 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 I can show you all the emails. I never once, not once, regarded to uh, the, the other kid involved as a perpetrator, nothing. As the one at fault, right? Not at all. You this said was, it was a situation that needed to be to be de-escalated and, and a, not evolve. And, and 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 the way I put it was a, as factual as it was, which was my kid is not being able to pursue his full potential right. because he is feeling a certain way right. about being in school because of this particular situation. Absolutely. Just want to talk to you about it. So right. parents, please get involved. Get involved. Get involved. Absolutely. Talk to your kids. Yes. You know they're your kids. Absolutely. They are the future. Yes. You know the, the, nothing else matters in life. It doesn't. I've I've, I've seen it all from here to the here, and it, life is uncontrollable. The only thing that you have, the only thing that you can control 
is the love and the affection that you give to the people who are in your circle. Absolutely. That's it. Absolutely. Well said, Vinicius. Brooklyn, I want to thank you for joining us today. Your beauty and aura just <laughs> expands in this whole room. We're just so happy to have you with us. Do you have any closing things you'd like to share with people about bullying? Not really. Not really. Well, you, everything you said was fantastic today, all right? So we appreciate your intelligence. We appreciate your courage. You're a one strong young lady. You're amazing, all right? Thank you. Of course. And Jamie, again, thank you for sharing your story. It's, it's, it's really amazing how your story, trust me, will bring about healing for other people listening today. Your strength will cause someone to get involved. The beauty of everything that you stated today will cause someone to say, hmm, how am I processing this what happened to me? How will, I, how, how will I react when I see one of my perpetrators? Will I go from a place of forgiveness? Will I go to a place of avoidance? Or will I go to a place of self-empowering, knowing that that will not happen to me again, I will not let it happen to anyone else, and that I will heal from this? Don't know exactly when, but the when is not the issue. It's just going through the process to get there. The, the major issue would be to not go to the pro, through the process to get there. But every day, a little better, a little better, a little better. I think it's so important dealing with the post-traumatic stress of bullying that we know that we have to take, just like being fit, we have to take small, sustainable steps to get fit. We have to take small, sustainable steps to deal through the process of bullying. But you're doing a phenomenal job, Jamie, so we appreciate you. you. <laughs> and Venetius, what can we say? You're the spokesperson for StopBullyingOrg.com. StopBullyingNow.org. StopBullyingNowFoundation.org. <laughs> you know, I, I want to thank you again for, for being with us. Any closing comments? And I also want to say something, too, that, you know, we saw online that your, your family actually has these incredible superfoods, Machado Superfoods, man. Okay. So this is pretty amazing. So I want to tell everybody can go to MachadoSuperfoods.com. Man, you're just a growing empire. <laughs> you really are, man. So any closing thoughts about, about bullying? How can people reach you on social media? Yeah, V Machado 82 on all social media. It's V for my first name, Vinicius Machado, my last name, 82. The year I was born, yes. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we were born. My age. The year we were yeah, born. We born. Uh, no, I just want to say, guys, uh, sincerely, stop bullying now, foundation.org. Um, Help us spread the love. Most importantly, the resources are there 24-7, free. We're a nonprofit because we really do care. And, um, you know, as within the case of Brooke um, and Jamie, just, you know, they're very fortunate. There's a lot of people out there watching who may not have um, the privilege that um, both Brooke, Jamie, and myself have had of st such strong support. And this is why we exist, stopbullyingnotfoundation.org. You can find counseling. Um, and resources within your own local community. Um, and if it's not there yet, we will get it there for you so that you can find that healing and you can get through this and not become another statistic. Thank you, Dr. Levi, for uh, having me great. on. So great to have all three of you here. It was just a wonderful show. I want to remind everyone again, stopbullyingnowfoundation.org. And the end, Venetia's uh, website and all of his social media platforms the same is vmachado82. And for myself, we want to thank you again for joining us on Twitch TV, as well as on all our social media platforms. Thanks for liking us, subscribing, and following us. We really appreciate it on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all those social media platforms. We have a presence there. So I'm, I'm grateful to have a wonderful team here today. I want to thank Janet Rodriguez, our producer of the show, as well as our phenomenal engineer, Mr. Jarvis Essex, a great guy that he is, as well as the owner of the show, Tony, Tony Sweet. So it's, it was a great show today. Our, our goal was really bring about healing, discussion, and to really hopefully change the narrative about what is bullying. How can you be involved? How can you stop it? And again, I think the bottom line today was about communication, about love, about forgiveness, and about self-empowerment, and talking to your children. If you talk to them, they may talk back. If you never talk to them, you may never get anything. You want to know what's going on in their lives, who they're dealing with, who they're around. You know, my father used to always say, Levi, show me your friends, and I'll tell you everything about yourself, son. Uh, I, and I, now, at 35 plus, I really get that. As a young kid, I used to think, oh, here he goes again. But now I, I appreciate my father. And uh, I just want everyone to, again, consider treating everyone the way you want to be treated. I think that's the way to really stop bullying. 
Well, this is Dr. Levi. I want to remind you, be kind to the veterans. Those men and women are the, the true heroes. They're the real X-Men, the real Avengers. They're, they're the ones that, that really give us our sustained freedoms. And remember, be kind to everyone because everyone is a reflection of yourself. This is Dr. Levi. See you soon. Bye.